What's up, everybody? Cramser and Joe, former GMA hosts, back. Jason taking a little bit of break. He was on a marathon editing, wave doing all of the David Bowie stuff, but we're just pumping out the album reviews here. Um, we're going to talk about Pompeii by Kate LeBon. I don't know a lot of her stuff. I know Crab Day and I think one other album. I discovered her in 2019 at Pitchfork. I thought she had a great set. So then I discovered her and looked her up after that. This album is a bit different than her other stuff. But I know, Joe, you thought pretty highly of it. I did, Kramzer. Um, I am pretty unfamiliar with her stuff. I think I've heard one of her albums before. The name sounds familiar. I know she's Welsh. So I didn't have a lot of expectations coming in. I didn't really know what I was getting into, but I heard good things. It's getting good reviews. You know, why not? Let's, let's listen to some Kate LeBon. And um, at first blush, it, it doesn't seem like something I would like. I think in general, it's very arty. Uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of dissonance in there. A lot of kind of ethereal stuff, uh, dreamy, meticulous. Not a lot of, you know, hooks, not a lot of choruses. She kind of like dangles like those melodies out there and kind of like never resolves to them. Uh, kind of like pulling away just when you think you're going to get like a, a hook or a chorus. And that's not my favorite genre, but I think this is really well crafted, really well made. I think she has a great voice. And it definitely kind of remind me of like later talk talk kind of like that post rock stuff uh, just really atmospheric really pretty without relying on like big choruses or or big melodies or hooks like that just sort of experimental art pop uh, but she's talented i mean she's very extremely talented enough to like pull off that level without kind of relying on you know big melodies and hooks and stuff like that so I did like it uh, a lot, love the instrumentation. I read that she composed it on the bass, which is really cool and very prominent bass lines kind of driving the songs, which I dug a lot. So I got it four stars right now for Pompeii. Well, it's interesting that you say that it's lacking the hooks and the choruses and things don't resolve. I agree with you. But in comparison to her other work, this is like friggin' Beach Boys, <laughs> like with the pop. This is her poppiest album, without a doubt, in the production and the style in almost every sense. The bass lines are, without a doubt, the best thing about this album. It is really well crafted. But I, I don't know if this is where I think her sound should go or if it's like the best way for her to get her songs out. I like this style a lot. I like the sound of the album. I've got no complaints of it. I do have a big problem with just the ride and the momentum of this album. It's pretty stale. A lot of the stuff sounds like every kind of piece before it. There are some exceptions to it. Um, I think that you get a nice, you know, jolt right off the beginning with moderation, which was like her big single, which is single worthy. It's pretty cool. It's pretty catchy. Um, and then Remember Me is pretty weird, but then all the other songs really kind of just seem like they're taken out of the same bag. So, uh, you know, and the albums kind of go in a bunch of different directions, different routes to getting the same kind of unified sound. I get waves of really experimental, like British 80s wave style and more art pop, like Baroque twists underneath. The very cool sound, very vivid and dreamy, borderlining on the surreal at times. The texture is the name of the game here. It's just so different than her like more stripped down art folk kind of leanings from before, which I thought suited her songwriting now. I don't know how well it's working here. I think it's a good album. I recommend it. I have three stars for this, which is my good. It's very mainstream for her. And I don't really like what this sound and direction really does for her singing style. There's a lot of songs where I kind of feel like she's just doing like a Debbie Harry impression at times, which is cool. Like, I think this is a good piece of her catalog. I just don't know how permanent this style should be. Like, it's kind of limiting her in a weird way. But the good thing is the sound, the production, the craft, none of the songs are bad. 
Um, you know, it's got like this relaxing pastel color kind of sensation. But yeah, it's just a little bit samey for me, not a lot of dynamic. It'll be really interesting for me to see if she kind of returns to her roots more after this, if she keeps the sound going and just makes it better and refines it, or if she just tries something completely else. And I'm not even saying that being like, I like Kate LeBon before, I like her, the albums I've heard, and I just want it to be like that. Even if this was the first one I've heard, I'd be, I'd probably still be at three stars and just be like, this kind of sounds like all the other 80s dream wave stuff that's not as good as the best stuff in that sound. So it's good. It's good. That's, well, that's very interesting that you would have that opinion. And, you know, I guess I don't have any knowledge. You know, I don't have previous knowledge of Kate LeBond. So I, I wasn't, you know, sort of misled by this one or, or thinking it would be some other direction. Because uh, I mean, I, I think your voice is great on here. And I think that's what really kind of that and the bass really kind of make it listenable for someone like me who's more reliant on pop songwriting. Uh, but but I thought moderation had like a almost like a Christine McVie kind of vibe, a little Fleetwood Mackey, uh, except for a little bit artier. Um, and I, I did read you was influenced by like Japanese city pop on this, so. Uh, it's, it's, I don't know, I, I liked it. I like the springy bass, kind of reminds me of like Japan, uh, especially on Cry Me Old Trouble. Uh, French Boys, I thought was pretty cool, but um, I don't know, I, I just, I like it. I'm not, it probably won't make my top 10 or anything, but I think for what it is, uh, if it can get me to four stars, I think it's pretty impressive for this type of, you know, not quite pop uh, music here. I think, I think this might be a case of it's 2022 now. I feel like this kind of throwback 80s dream pop sound has been going on maybe a, starting to spread a little bit. Different. You know what I mean? Like, especially for more obscure artists like that, when they want to get more raid, you know, more on the radar, I feel like this is always the sound that they go to. We talk about this a lot and a lot of times I love it, but maybe maybe this is the last year we put a bow on that. Like if you wanna go retro after 2022, maybe Cram from TLM wants you to try something a little different here. But, you know, closing thoughts are that, that I still thought it was good. And, you know, I, like I said, I don't know all of her other stuff, but this did not sound like the Kate LeBon that I piqued my interest in 2019 or on her other albums, so. You know, still worth a good listen. But if this was the only Kate LeBon album you heard, I can't imagine you, like, I can't imagine it being a good representation of the rest of her catalog. Fair enough. And yeah, I think we've pretty much mined the 80s as far as we can go. Like, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, maybe some grunge revivals, maybe some pop punk, emo, um, New Jack Swing, something like that, maybe next uh, next year. I think I think you're starting to get a little bit of that like 90s grunge revival, a little bit of shoegaze in there. But like just looking at my top 10 last year, how many times I was like, it's very 80s. I mean, I said that for Ryan Adams, Big Colors, Japanese Breakfast, uh, War on Drugs, obviously. Like, oh, this is kind of 80s throwback, 80s throwback, 80s throwback. Let's tie a bow on this. But... All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Let us know what you think about Pompeii by Kate LeBon or Kate LeBon in general. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Check out our vast array of social media links in the description below, as well as merchandise with cool ass hoodies, shirts, mugs, and other memorabilia. We also have Patreon right now. If you want to get the benefits on there as well, check it out or just support us at the $1 level. We got Roxy music coming up next week, as well as a new decade for songs of the year, which may have already started given this video with 1990, but will be definitely in the 90s by the time this airs. So thanks for watching, Cramzer and Joe out, and we'll talk to you next time. See you later.